Hello, my name is James. I'm the owner of Barron Tile and Stone, in Central North Carolina. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Um, the video that I'm uploading today is a instructional how-to video about um, installing a shower system that is curbless. It's a roll-in shower so that um, yeah, it has access for a wheelchair. Um, it's also easier to step in and out of without a curb and the situation that we have is when you try to put a curbless shower in you have to recess the floor in order to get the uh, slab in that gives you the pitch for the shower floor. So there's a few difficulties with that sometimes when you run into an open truss system you can't cut the top of the truss off because it, it eliminates the structure from the truss. So. Um, we had to come up with a different way to do this. So this is um, the first one that we've done this particular way. It's a little system that I've devised and it's using a couple of products. One is the Schluter product, which we use on all of our showers. Um, the Schluter Drain, the Detra, and, and the Curdy is a, are products that we use all the time, as well as their niches and that sort of thing. Um, the other product that we're utilizing today is the TI Pro Board. TI Pro Board is a fiberglass underlayment system that replaces the um, plywood subfloor in the home and it allows us to um, to get a stronger floor underlayment but in a thinner space so uh, thanks for watching and uh, this will be part one part two will be as we tile and then the completed project and then after the glass has been installed and all that sort of thing so thanks for watching please follow our channel so that you get the updates and we are going to make it a habit to regularly post these updates which are helpful for homeowners and also for uh, tile installers um, I'm always looking for new tricks of the trade, and I'm sure you are too. So thanks for watching. Today we're going to work on a project where we're doing a bathroom renovation, and you can see all the sheetrock's in, plumbing rough ends done. <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and put the board down on the floor today, but the customer has requested a roll-in curbless shower. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this plywood subfloor out, we're going to replace it with a product called TI Pro Board, and then we're going to go ahead and pour a thin pan in there and then the schluter will extend from the floor of the shower all the way out into the room. So first time we've done this, a um, little brainstorm idea I had that I think might work and uh, we're going to give it a shot and see how she goes. So this is a uh, curbless shower floor uh, day one. This is the TI Pro Board product. And you can see it's a fiberglass material and there's little channels that go all the way down and we lay this across the top of the floor joist in place of the underlayment the subfloor and there's a little notch on this end and that notch goes over the corresponding um, ridge on this end they all lock together and it's a uh, pretty flimsy at this point but uh, what happens is when we fill it up these are like little key channels we fill that up with thin set and um, let this thing dry and it it dries rock hard so this would be our replacement piece for the subfloor. Um, this strip here is uh, eight foot long and we'll be replacing the entire floor system with the TI Pro board. So that's, uh, that's the product we're using. All right, phase one, we've cut the subfloor out and we put the cement board down inside of the room. If I step in here, you'll be able to see that we've got now the thickness of the underlayment and then the thickness of the quarter inch cement board is what we're working on. on the outside of the shower gives us about an inch and a half and then on that side over here we're going to run the TI Pro board across the floor joist we are going to run a nailer strip along this edge and just along these leading edges here where the traffic will be going from the main floor into the bathroom floor um, just to take the extra load and we're going to start with that now the Pro board cuts with the um, same grinder that we used to cut the cement board and it's just a fiberglass cuts fairly easy then we've lined up where our drain hole will go. This is the Schluter drain kit, and it'll actually just sit right in the hole like that. And then we'll mud the Schluter drain kit to the TI Pro board here with thin set. And then from this level up here, we'll pitch our concrete slab back to get the pitch for the shower floor. We've gone through here and we've put the Durrock cement board up on the walls and we brought it right down to the floor joist. You can see where we've taken the subfloor all the way out. We've cut the drain pipe to the right height. This is the TI Pro board now that we're adding on the floor. It's a fiberglass material. And you see it's a little bit flexible when it doesn't have any thin set in it. And you can see how far we are down there from our floor. That will become our pitch to the drain. So here's how the TI Pro board works. Here's the next piece. This is the one that's got the hole cut in it. 
and basically there's a little lip on the end of it that clips over, locks down into place. We've got our drain hole lined up. Then we take our Schluter drain and the drain will end up going right down inside that hole, locking onto that pipe. We'll glue that in place and we'll be all set. What we're doing is running some screws down to the TI Pro board and that'll pull it down tight to the floor joist. It's already getting stiff, a lot stiffer than it is here. And then we can go ahead and fill that in with thin set. And when that thin set dries in all those key channels, this thing dries solid. What we've got here is we've got a little lip on the edge of the, each board. And the next board has a groove that receives that lip. So when those two lock together, the, it's like a pressure fit. You step on it and it locks in and doesn't come apart again. At this stage what we're doing is we're taking the pin set and we're pushing it down into all those little keyways and just screeding it off. We force them sit down between the drain and the TI Pro board. Work that in well. And what that'll do is that'll give us a nice connection between the TI Pro board and the drain. And the next step is we'll come from this level here and screed from here to this level up here with the 4 in 1 floor mud. And then what that'll do is while this thin set is still wet in here, that'll bond to the 4 in 1 floor mud and we'll get a really good connection there, make this a very strong floor and still end up with a slab that's only going to be fairly thin at the outside edge but what we've done is we've done a roll-in curbless shower with no curb and no cutting of the floor joists or the restructuring of the home underneath so uh, existing structure stays intact no um, re-engineering required there and we're going to end up with a, um, a job that would normally require cutting the floor joists down so. Um, and we are at 11.20 in the morning. We've been here three hours. So in three hours we've gotten all the cement board down in the entire bathroom area and we've gotten all the cement board up on the walls. We've got the Schluter niche installed. We've got the floor cut in. We've got the drain connected with the plumbing and we're going to be out here in about another hour. So not, not too bad a job. That's just regular unmodified thin set in there and that's filling up the grooves and once that dries be like standing on a concrete slab. What we've done here is we've cut some little fur strips and they're the same height as the floor is out here and we'll run those all the way around. Get some more of those and we'll run those all the way around the shower and we'll use those as a screed board. So we'll screed from that to the drain and that'll give us an even pitch. And we don't need one on this side because we're going to screed right to this floor here which is the outside floor and then when we lay the, the uh, floor tile on this and the shower tile on that they'll be level because the substrate here and the substrate in the shower will both be level. On Monday we'll be back out to this job and we're going to put Schluter Dietra on all the, um, Curdy, sorry, on all the walls and that'll be our waterproofing membrane. It'll run across the floor and we'll actually run it right out in the room here because anytime you have a roll-in curbless shower type situation you're going to have um, water that gets out into the room. We want to make sure that the room out here is waterproofed as well. We'll actually run it up that wall there as well. That way it's behind the wooden base, so if there's any damage from water, it'll get the, the wooden base wet. Um, we might even suggest to the client some tile baseboard there, but that'll keep the um, anything from rotting in the, in the future. So, cement boards all the way down, screeds in on the TI Pro board, Curdy drain is in, Curdy niche is in, and uh, we're about ready to rock and roll with this thing. We're going to get that slab poured today, and then we will be out of here for the day and back on Monday. It's been a pretty... Good Saturday morning. It's only 11.30 now, so we're moving right along. This concludes part one of our video on how to do a roll-in curbless shower without removing any structure in the home. Um, the system we were working on today was framed up with 2x10s. It is pretty easy to add a sister 2x8 beside them, cut 2 inches out of the 2x10, and therefore reduce your shower floor. But uh, it's a system we wanted to try. The obvious application for this would be in a house where there is um, um, an open truss web or web truss system where you cannot cut the 2x4 off the top of the truss as you lose all the structure of the truss. So something like this would work well for, um, for open truss systems. But it also did save a lot of time. It's noon. We've been here three and a half hours. We got this thing done and ready for tile. So not a bad job for two guys. Um, 
Tune in, follow our channel on YouTube. We're going to be posting more great videos like this. Part two of this video will be posted when the shower floor is done. It's going to have a feature of a, a little mini brick picture frame all the way around the perimeter of the shower floor, six rows of that. The inside, inside of that will be octagonal um, in a travertine noche uh, color stone. The floor out here is going to be 20 by 20 laid straight. We've got some 20 by 20s going on the wall up to another border of the noche bricks and then above that will be 10 by 10 diagonal up to a height of about 7 feet or where that cement board ends. So um, the box containing the rest of the parts of the drain, that's a handy little way to hold on to that. Keep that handy. We'll need that when we put the shower floor in. So um, thanks for watching our video and uh, please follow our channel for more great videos coming up explaining little things that we found that makes the telling business a little bit easier to do. So thanks for watching.